Hello everyone, now uh, welcome back. So in this video, we'll be talking about Amazon EMR. So let's go ahead and start. So to view this dashboard, click the services and go to analytics. And here you can see EMR, so click that. So this is how we can redirect to this uh, particular dashboard. And uh, coming to the definition of Amazon EMR, uh, it's an elastic map reduce, it's a cloud-based uh, big data processing service. So it simplifies the processing of large amounts of data using uh, popular frameworks such as Apache Hadoop and Apache Spark. So EMR enables users to quickly and cost-effectively deploy and scale the clusters for processing, analyzing, and visualizing the data, making it easier for to extract valuable insights from vast data set. So saying that, uh, let's go ahead and uh, create a cluster. Cluster, and we'll be talking about uh, these configurations. So the name is default and coming to EMR release, you can see we have 6.15. So, and these are the different tools uh, and their versions. So for example, if you change the EMR version, so based on that, the tools uh, versions will be changing as well. <clears throat> and uh, even the tool sets will be changing. So if you select uh, Code Hadoop or HP, so based on that, the tools will be changing. If you want to install more, you can just add it and uh, you can do that way. But in this case, I'll just leave it as default and uh, coming to the glue uh, data catalog settings. So basically it's a fully managed metadata repository that stores metadata about data sources, transforms and targets in your ETL workflow. So when you are using Amazon EMR with the uh, AWS uh, glue data catalog, you can configure settings to integrate uh, the two services. So this integration allows EMR to use glue data catalog as an external hive meta store for storing the metadata. Since we are not using it, I'm just leaving it as uh, default for now. And you can select the operating system. Uh, right now it's Amazon Linux release. If you have an AMI, AMI you can uh, use that uh, AMI ID. But in this case, I'll just select uh, this release. So coming to the cluster configurations, you have instance groups and instance fleet. So instance groups are used when you want a more straightforward setup with a uniform set of instances. While instance fleets offer a greater flexibility by allowing you to use mix of instance types and taking advantage of spot instances to optimize this cost. So based on your uh, needs, you can select either the groups or the fleet. And uh, you can use some uh, multiple primary nodes for more availability, but in this case, I'll just leave it as default. Uh, so, and so basically the primary node is a main node. So we have discussed about what is primary node, what is core and what is task node. <clears throat> you can also remove the instance group if you want. So let's go to the next one, which is uh, cluster scaling and provisioning. So basically, if you want, uh, if you, basically if you know your workload patterns in advance, you can uh, set this cluster size manually. Otherwise, you can use uh, Amazon EMR and uh, make scaling decisions automatically based on the conditions that you have provided. <clears throat> so you can set here, or uh, you can use uh, EMR managed scaling, and you can uh, give minimum cluster size or maximum cluster size. So based on that, uh, it will uh, scale up and scale down. So you can use, uh, you know custom automatic scaling and click actions. And based on your requirement, you can add the uh, uh, instance number of uh, instances. Mm -hmm. So we have default VPC and subnet to the steps. Uh, you can add uh, steps to your cluster, uh, which are the processing tasks that EMR performs. So these steps can include running Hive or pick scripts and custom jars. So you can add here and uh, coming to the cluster terminations. There are uh, three termination mechanisms. So first one is manually terminate cluster. So basically it disables uh, auto termination and creates a long running cluster. Whereas uh, the second one, automatic uh, terminate cluster after a last step ends. So basically you can choose this option. Uh, this creates a transient cust uh, cluster that uh, shutdowns after the last step that runs, which you are adding here. So since we have not added, uh, it's just uh, not showing us. And coming to the last one, which is terminate cluster after the idle time. So we can create this cluster with auto termination policy that shuts down after a specific idle time. So for example, you can create one day or two days. So based on your needs, you can just use that. So coming to the uh, bootstrap actions. So bootstrap actions are the scripts that runs on the cluster nodes before the cluster starts. So you can use them to install additional softwares and configuration settings. And uh, coming to the cluster logs, so you can see this is where our uh, logs are stored. Uh, you can also encrypt it using the KMS key. So saying that, let's go down and uh, let's go to identity and access management. So basically I am uh, uses these service roles to perform actions on your behalf. So the Amazon EMR service roles defines the permissions that EMR has when it uh, provis uh, provisions the EC2 instance for your cluster. So that is what it is according to the definitions. 
and then uh, you can also create an uh, instance profile you can see we have access to s3 buckets so you can uh, specify the uh, specific bucket or you can give access to all the buckets and create the cluster so these are some of the configurations that you can uh, know whenever you are creating these clusters. So we'll be talking more about this in the further videos. And uh, coming to this video, I hope you guys understood the concept of today's video. If you have liked the video, please click like below. And if you subscribe to my channel, please do subscribe to my channel. And thank you.